Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Answers to BJT Emitter Follower Riddle, which is related to a TI goofing in peak current mode controller's data sheet. There is a relevant video, here is the link to it. I'm going to put it also on the YouTube page of this video that you are now watching. And it's giving a background on peak current mode, which is not essential, but whoever wants to get the background information is welcome to look at this video. The problem that we are discussing here is mixing of two signals. Here is one signal, there is another signal, and we are doing it by having two resistors, which are sort of, uh, by superposition, you might say, mixing these two to this point V sub S. This is just a filter capacitor. Now, in the data sheet of this uh, controller's family, and in fact, some other families, TI shows the way to do it by the following circuit. We have here the signal. This is signal that is generated here. Then we have a buffer. This is the BJT transistor, the capacitor, resistor, one resistor. There is another resistor getting the other signal. This is just the current sense resistor through which this uh, current is passing and generating this voltage. So this voltage and this triangular ramp type waveform are mixed together at this point. Just looking at it in a simple way without the extra circuitry that we are not interested in, then rather than having the signal here and here and mixing them by the two resistors, we do have now a buffer, it's a BJT transistor, there is a capacitor, and then there are the two resistors which are sort of mixing these two signals. So this is the circuit that TI shows in this datasheet and other datasheets and related to this issue and some other issues which I'm not covering. So the riddle was like that. Is the emitter follower circuit okay? How does this emitter follower really work? If it's not okay, the emitter follower circuit, what is wrong and why? And if it's not, how can it be fixed? So this was the riddle, I posted it and got many, many answers, and most of them are correct. And here is my answers to this riddle. This is the circuit we are talking about. In fact, this is like a peak detector. That's what it is. Although we have here a buffer, so in this case, we are not loading this triangular waveform source. There's a source here, which may be of higher impedance. So this is sort of buffering it, so we are not loading it. But basically, it is a peak detector because current can flow only in this direction. It cannot flow the other direction. So what happens here is, as this triangular waveform develops, there is a current here. Eventually, this capacitor will be charged to the peak, and that will be the end of it. And this is exactly like this peak detector, okay? Uh, the capacitor will charge to the peak, no matter that there are some resistors. Uh, this may slow down the charging, but eventually it will charge up, and then that's it. You will not see any signal here, or if any, it will be, of course, of very small value. In practice, however, in, in a practical circuit, you might see something a little bit different because there is a capacitor between the base and emitter. So on these sharp transitions, this negative transition of this triangular waveform, you expect to see some current like this through this capacitor. So what I would expect to see is that in general, it behave as we have said before, but in these transitions, you might have some current flowing like this, and then eventually it will be restored. I mean, the charge of the capacitor will be restored, and then it will go back and forth. So this is what I'd expect. Now, in order to verify what I'm saying, I did some simulation, LTE spy simulation. So the simulated circuit only dealt with this part here. Okay, we are not concerned with all this uh, IC. So we have here a waveform, a generating a waveform. There is a buffer, capacitor, resistor, another resistor, and there is a resistor here. I have not added this because I'm just looking sort of by superposition the contribution of this ramp here 
to the voltage here, which is the set voltage. So here is the LT splice circuit. Let's see, we have here the buffer. This is just for measuring the current, capacitor, resistor, and other resistor. This is the sense resistor. This is this one here. And this is the filter capacitor as we have it here. And I've added here a diode because normally at an input to a IC, you would have a diode between the input to ground to prevent negative voltages from damaging the circuit. So I've added this diode. And here is the generator for this uh, ramp signal, for this triangular signal. And it is done by having a pulse source, a very short pulses, which are shorting this capacitor, which is fed from this voltage source through this resistor and capacitor. This is exactly how it's done here. This is a, in fact, a reference signal, a five volt signal. Here is the resistor, here is the capacitor, and here internally there is a mechanism that will discharge this uh, capacitor when it comes to a voltage of about 2.7 volt. That's what they say in the data sheet. Again, this particular unit is a very old unit, has been uh, around at least 20 years, probably 25 years, if not more, and people have been using it uh, in many, many, many applications. So let's see what we got. Uh, this is the result of the simulation. We see the triangular waveform very nicely. It's about 2.7, I didn't try to make it exactly the same. Here we have these currents that I've mentioned. These are small currents, there's a microamp, and this is during this transition, we see the current, this is the current through this uh, voltage, which is the emitter current, okay? So we see uh, these currents, which again are coming through this capacitance here uh, to the input. And then we see the mixing point. Uh, this is this point here, and you see it's a very small signal nothing like the shape of this triangular waveform. We just see here the voltage drop when the current is passing through the transistor. We see a small 16 millivolt drop, drop and that's it. And so that's what we see here. And this is not what we expect and this is not what we need. We need here to have a replica of this in a smaller amplitude, but something that will look similar to this. So the question is, how should this circuit be? Well, there are two ways to do it. Number one, you can put a resistor here to allow a quiescent current around which you'll have this uh, perturbation or the AC component, like any other biased uh, BJT, which is one way to go. But uh, the other way, which is the more sensible way, is of course just to take this capacitor altogether. And I should say that this is the way that people have been using this circuit, and I myself, for many, many years. So this is nothing new. This is uh, the way it was done, just using a transistor for buffering this signal so as not to load it, and that's it. And here it is. So it's the same circuit, except that I've shorted the capacitor. And here is what we are getting. This is, again, the ramp signal, the triangular signal. Now we get an AC, a real AC through this uh, emitter because it is biased. And we have now a output, which is the mixing point here. And you see that we have the ramp here. This uh, rounding here is due to the fact that there is a filter capacitor, which is okay. We are interested in this Thing to be added to the signal. This is for stabilization against the so-called subharmonic oscillation, which again I'm not going into. If one is interested, look up the video that I've uh, linked and it's found in the YouTube page of this video that you are watching. So the question is now, why on earth would anybody add here a capacitor? What's the motivation to this? What's the rationale? And let me guess that the reason for doing this is the fact that this ramp has a DC offset. 
So here you are going to have a DC offset too. And perhaps the person who decided to add this to the circuit was sort of concerned about this offset and therefore he thought that by adding this capacitor uh, it'll, he will get rid of this offset. Now first of all it turns out that a small offset doesn't change anything and it, there's no problem, there's no harm in it. And here is the reason in short, again I'm not going into all the detail. This is a P current mode controller. This is gen generic description of it. This is the controller and this is the stage. We are measuring the current here and when the current comes to a certain level, a peak level, which is compared to this voltage, it'll turn off the gate. So the gate is turned on until this current here goes to a level which is determined by the output here and then it will turn off. So if we are going to have a DC component here, okay, be a DC component, then obviously this will change this value and at first glance you would worry, okay, it will change the operation. No, it will not. The reason is the following. There is an outer voltage loop here. So if suppose there is a DC added and the current is not the correct one, there will be a change in the output. This change will be sensed here against the reference and this level now at the output of the air amplifier will automatically adjust itself until the output voltage is correct. So there is a self-correction operation here by the way, it is also helping to correct the circuit when you add this signal because after all, you are adding a ramp to the signal so what you see here is really not the current but something added to it. Still, there is no problem because if the output will change then the level here of comparison will change and everything will be okay. So there is really no problem with a small DC. Obviously, if the DC offset will be very, very large, we'll be out of uh, operating point, but this is not the case. But there was another question that I sort of asked myself. How come that a person or an engineer or a technician, whoever, would add a capacitor without testing it? And I have a suggestion for an answer. And I think it was tested by simulation. And here is what happened. If you run a simulation, at the very, very beginning, the capacitor is not charged. So you still have AC going through it. This is just a up to four millisecond from the just about beginning of the process. This is the triangular waveform. This is the current through the emitter and here is the voltage at the sense point. This is the voltage uh, here, right? Or let's have a look at it here, here. So at the very beginning, at the very beginning, the capacitor is no charge, still AC will pass. And here what you get, this is the first 100 microsecond. So you see that sort of it looks okay. Here we have the ramp, everything is fine. But if you wait till the circuit stabilizes and the capacitor is actually charged to the peak value, this is what you get. So perhaps, I don't know if this was the case, uh, somebody really tested it, but just didn't look until the circuit stabilized. There's no question that this circuit doesn't work properly because the capacitor is charged. There's no way that there is an AC of this waveform that will pass through the transistor, which has no bias to it. So therefore, uh, this is a non-working circuit or I'd say it's working in a faulty way. So in this circuit, there is no slope compensation, which it could be very bad because um, without slope compensation, with a duty cycle more than 0.5, the circuit can go into subharmonic oscillation, which could be dangerous. So this is not just a simple error, it could actually cause uh, malfunction. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. 
I hope you found it of interest. Thank you very much.